my name is Pearl and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a different video from the videos that I've always done. Um, uh, the perks of being an ESL teacher is that we are on holidays and we're enjoying being home. And one of the things that I got to take out from this experience is that take time for yourself, understand what I want and where to it's the break that we take and to finish off the year amazingly i have been sick <clears throat> i hope you all can my audio is very audible and yeah my voice has been going and coming back because i have flu i'm getting much better and i'm hoping this video will have someone I have written down notes because I don't want to make this video too long but the purpose of the video is to actually talk about healing one of the things that people like saying they like saying you must heal you know we just throw our the word around heal heal ma'am you need to heal but what are you healing from and what are we supposed to be healing from and what happened to us or what happened to you for a person to identify that you need to heal or it's just a word that people will throw to you as an how do i put it or is it a word that people throw around just to keep you quiet or just to make you feel like something is wrong with you i don't think we are all perfect people perfect beings but as a spirit being having a physical experience in this world you learn that there's so many things that people go through and how to navigate those spaces so hey i am going to be naked before you and i'll share my my traumas my childhood traumas the stuff that i'm still healing and what happened to me okay um yeah we're gonna talk about my trauma what happened how i navigated the world <laughs> how i navigated the world how i'm navigating yeah how i navigated because it happened way back and how i'm still navigating i have been on survival mode for a very long time firstly from being because when you go to therapy you get to understand what's really wrong with you and i think i i got to understand i had baby I had daddy issues, I had abandonment issues, I had, I have valid validation issues, attachment issues, and I was bleeding for, for a very long time, I have been bleeding, and suicide thoughts, so many things that were happening, and it takes time it takes time for you to understand what's really happening or other people they just give up on themselves and they just think that's how life's supposed to be well that's not so that's not how life's supposed to be and that's not how you're supposed to be navigating this world you're supposed to have a beautiful experience whether good or bad all those experiences should come back and you reflect and say okay i learned this next time i'm not gonna do this and soldier on become a better person okay so to me oh there's so a lot of challenges and injustices neglect and grief i am still learning to navigate the space of grief i'm still dealing with the wound of grief okay grief in the sense that i lost my mom 20 years ago it still hurts and not only my mom but a couple of people who came after my mom but let's take it back to what happened to me how did i get this abandonment daddy issues validation and all on and all so i grew up in a household of four that is me my younger sister mom and dad i grew up at a kangala and i grew up knowing that i am pearl sikula right from daycare to primary and then one day we went home my mom's home 
and then I went to my I went to this place when I got there they said it's my dad's place right when I get there I'm like okay and then I remember one of my aunts asked me who am I I said I am Pearl C. Cool. and then she said no you are not Pearl C. Cool. you are Pearl de Gilead. and I said no my dad is in Pretoria and she he said I am Pearl de Gilead. all right so at you you young you grow up knowing this person is your dad and then all of a sunday that distraction and disruption happens that you are not that person who's raising you is not your father and now this is the man that is your father from there on i look i remember i was looking at him and i said okay he is my father but how and now you're being told that yeah you're the last born your mom left with you when you were two years old that all those things that is the first trigger number one this man abandoned me in my head that's what goes in my head that he left me he didn't make efforts to find me and now i am growing up as a person that i know this is my dad and only to find out that person is not even my dad right and then i have to navigate that space to identify where is my core identity because who is this person now issue of identity doesn't start when you're an adult it starts when you are young because that's where the foundation is all right and then from moving from that distraction because it's a disruption what you know what you used to know and how you've been moving it's been disrupted okay we move we don't go back to pretoria and i'm like are we not going home and then my mom says this is our home my grandmother's house and i grew up at uh, in my grandmother's house and you know in grandmother's house there's a lot of cousins there's a lot of siblings there's everyone is there everyone is there to a point that i got molested to a point that i got molested and i still remember vividly so your body remembers everything anything that leads to that day triggers me to a point i remember when i was dating this guy he helped me and i pushed him and then he said to me why are you behaving like i want to rape you and then he asked where you raped and i remember looking at him and not saying anything and i woke up and I dressed up but here's the thing that happened when I was a child I got molested when I was a child and I remember telling my mom that this person we were sleeping we were all sleeping and then this person decided to be on top of me and he and you know when you are sleeping you could feel oh, there's something happening and then I woke up and then I saw him and then when he saw that I saw him, that's when he ran away. And I remember telling my mom, because you know when you are young and they're bathing you, and then I remember saying, so and so did this to me. And then he and she looked at me. It's like she was looking at me with disbelief, but also I think deep down it really cut her. Because she said, don't talk about it anymore. Don't tell anyone. Does anyone know about this? I said, no. And I remember we moved from that area. We went to stay somewhere else. So now I remember from being abandoned, my dad, living the life that was a lie, that the person who raised me was not my dad. Now there's a dad. From, and then from that place to being molested not only that right not only that not only that so there's so many things that happened you navigate the space of injustice like okay this person did this to me and nothing is done and you look at it and then they say you need to move on all right you need to move on you're going to move on and you're not going to talk about this anymore never spoke about it never told anyone until when 
I, I think when I started my healing journey and I called my aunt and then I told her about it and I asked her if she knew and she never responded. I think she knew. You know, um, we carry on. My mom has another child. Before then, my younger sister, this and this is so, oh, my younger sister. So we went to play holidays. We went to play and upon us are going back home. We were waiting at the four-way street. We went to pass and my younger sister, it was me, my cousin and my younger sister was holding her. I was on my left. She was in the middle and my cousin was on her right. And... So we were waiting for the cars to pass so that we can cross the road. My young, my cousin passed before me, before us, while we were waiting. And I remember my younger sister letting go of my hand and then she went inside and the taxi was closer and then it knocked her. I was blamed. Um, how I think I was six, seven at the time. Oh, yeah, I think I was seven, six, seven. And I was blamed for my younger sister being knocked by a taxi. And I was 